Welcome back to Chapter 7. Today we're going to look at Section 7.3, which is still um, pertaining to volume. However, we're going to use the shell method. The objectives of this section are going to be to look at um, finding the volume of a solid using the shell method, and then at the end we're going to look at the differences um, between the disk method that we learned in Section 7.2 and the shell method in, from 7.3. Another method that can be used to find the volume of a solid that's being revolved around a particular axis is called the shell method. Um, and the reason for this is because it, we are actually going to be creating, it's like a cylindrical shell um, or a tube. Um, if you look at the rectangle right here that has the width W and height H, um, we also have some distance P, and if you notice, P is kind of like the distance in between um, the top and the bottom of that rectangle, okay? So it's kind of like the center of that rectangle. If we take that rectangle and we revolve it around the axis, we're going to get this 3D image that looks like a tube or a cylindrical shell. And this tube has some thickness of width, or I'm sorry, some thickness of W. Therefore, we're going to say that the volume of this shell is going to be equal to 2 pi times P times H times W. Or, if you want to break it down into what all the pieces mean, we have 2 pi times our average radius, which we call P, times the height, which we call H, and our thickness, which we call W. And this is what we're going to use to find the volume of a solid um, using the shell method. Similar to the disk method, we know that if we take this rectangular solid here and rotate it, um, or re revolve it around an axis, that we're going to get some 3D image. Now, we know just from the previous slide that we can find the change in our volume by taking 2 pi, multiplying it by PY, which is our average uh, distance um, from the axis to the center of that rectangle, multiply it by the height and multiply it by the change in Y, we're going to be able to calculate our volume. Now, as these are summations still, so as we take more and more summations, or as N approaches infinity, we know that our volume is going to get more and more accurate. Um, and when we do this, we can actually represent this with an integral. So we get 2 pi times the integral from c to d of that average distance p of y times the height h of y dy. And just like with the disk method, we have to pay attention to which um, axis we're using as an axis of revolution. If we're using the horizontal axis of revolution, we're going to calculate our volume still using 2 pi times an integral but we're going to be integrating from C to D this time, and we're going to be looking at the functions P and H in terms of Y versus in terms of X, and then we're going to multiply it by DY here. Just like if we're looking at a vertical axis of revolution, our volume is going to be 2 pi times the integral from A to B of P of X, H of X, DX. And again, that has to deal with which axis we're revolving our um, rectangle about. Let's look at example one. Example one says to find the volume of the solid of revolution formed by revolving the region bounded by y equals x minus x cubed and the x-axis, and we're looking at just between zero and one, and we're going to revolve all of this around the y-axis. Now if you look at the picture over here, again, just like with the disk method, sketch, sketch what you know so you have a visual to look at. Um, I'm going to take this region here and we're going to revolve it around the y-axis. Now because I'm doing the shell method, I want to revolve a rectangle that is parallel to the axis of revolution. That's why I'm going to choose this vertical um, rectangle. Because I'm using the vertical rectangle, we know that our width of our rectangle is going to be represented by delta x. The height is going to be the function that was given or um, x minus x cubed, and um, we're going to be looking from a to b, which in this case is from 0 to 1. Now you'll also notice we have to find out what our p of x is, and if you look right here, p of x 
is just equal to some distance x. So wherever I have a p of x into my um, volume equation, I'm just going to plug in the variable x. So just to kind of rehash what we've already gone over, we said that volume was equal to 2 pi times the integral. And because we're using, um, we're going to integrate with respect to x, we know that we're integrating from 0 to 1 of p of x times h of x dx. Now, my 2 pi is going to stay constant, and we're still going from 0 to 1, but we said our p of x was equal to x, and our h of x was really the function that was given, which was x minus x cubed dx. And if I simplify this, I have 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus x to the fourth dx. Now when we integrate that, we end up with 2 pi as a constant. The integral of x squared is going to be x cubed divided by 3 minus the integral of x to the fourth is going to be x to the fifth divided by 5, and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. When I plug that in and multiply by 2 pi, you should end up with 4 pi divided by 15. And this would be the final volume of that region. Now, example 2 says to find the volume of the solid of revolution formed by revolving the region bounded by x, e, or x equals e to the negative y squared, the y-axis, which again we're looking between 0 and 1, and we're going to rotate these around the x-axis. Now if you look at our image here, this is what our graph looks like. Okay, Because we are revolving this around the x-axis, I have to come up with a rectangle that is parallel to, which gives me a horizontal rectangle. So because of this, I know that when I integrate, I will be integrating with respect to y. So if I go ahead and write the volume equation, I have volume is equal to 2 pi times the integral, and I'm looking from 0 to 1 for my y values. We said p of y is this distance here, and that's just equal to some y value, so I'm going to plug in y, times my h of y, which is e to the negative y squared, dy. When I go to integrate this, I notice that if I call u a negative y squared and du then would become a negative 2y dy, I see that I to offset this negative 2 here, because I've only got the y up here, all I have to do is multiply or I have to pull out a negative one-half up front. So that's going to give me 2 pi times a negative one-half. And then I have, I really have e to the u du, which is going to give me e to the negative y squared. And I'm still looking at that from 0 to 1. So when I simplify, I have a negative pi times e to the negative y squared from 0 to 1. And if you plug in your 1 and your 0, you should find that you get a volume equal to pi times 1 minus 1 divided by e which is approximately equal to 1.986. And this would be your final volume of that region that was revolved around your x-axis. Next we're going to look at the comparison of the disk method from 7.2 and the uh, shell method that we learned here in 7.3. Um, now both are really similar. However, the key pieces 
that when we're um, doing the disk method, okay, and I'm looking at the disk method, um, when we did this, our representative rectangle was always perpendicular to the axis that we were revolving around. Okay, so if you look here, in, in this, um, these first two examples here, if I was revolving around the x-axis, or I'm sorry, the y-axis, I would be doing, or I would be generating a representative rectangle that was perpendicular, um, so it would be a horizontal rectangle. Likewise, if I was um, rotating my figure around the x-axis, I was coming up with a representative rectangle that was perpendicular to the x-axis, which would give me the vertical rectangle. Now, on the other side, when we look at the shell method, okay, I notice that my representative rectangle is always parallel to the axis that I'm revolving around. So if I'm doing something um, where I have a vertical axis of revolution, I'm going to draw a vertical rectangle because it's parallel to the y-axis. And if I'm doing a horizontal axis of rep um, revolution, I'll be revolving a horizontal rectangle and um, generating my volume that way. And sometimes what you'll see is sometimes you can use either a disk method or a shell method when you're solving your problems. And other times you'll see that the disk method is clearly the best way to go or the shell method is clearly the best way to go. And we have two more examples to look at um, and you can see where the shell method might be a little bit better um, situation and we'll go over that here in just a second. Now let's look at example three. It tells us to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by y equals x squared plus 1, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1. And we're going to rotate this around the y-axis. So here's my picture that I have to look at. And what I notice is that if I go around the y-axis and I want to use the washer method, I have to, with the washer method, I am going to generate rectangles that are perpendicular to my axis of revolution. So perpendicular to the y-axis is going to give me a horizontal rectangle. And if you do that, what you notice is, is you're going to have to generate two integrals now. The first one is going to be um, to cover this region here. The second rectangle is going to have to be to cover this region in here. So in this case, it may not be best to use the washer method. So let's go and look and see what happens if we do it, um, if we generate the rectangle so that it's parallel to our y-axis or look at the shell. So again, I have the same image drawn right here. Now, if I generate a vertical rectangle or one that runs parallel to my axis of revolution, what you'll see is at every point I'm starting out I'm touching the x-axis here, and then I'll be touching my function at the top. Okay, so that means I've got that whole function is covered, and I'm not going to have to split my interval up, or my integrals up. So this would probably be the better method of the two to use. So let's go ahead and set our equation up. We have volume is equal to 2 pi. I'm going from A to B because I am doing a vertical rectangle. I'm going to do this with respect to x. So I'm going from 0 to 1. My p of x is going to equal x because this distance here is um, x. My h of x is going to be my function. And my function was x squared plus 1 dx. Now when I distribute, I end up with a volume that's equal to 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed plus x dx. And if I integrate that, we have 2 pi times x to the fourth divided by 4 plus x squared divided by 2. Evaluate that from 0 to 1. And if I plug everything in, we should end up with a volume that's equal to 3 pi divided by 2. All right, for our final example, we want to find the volume of the solid that's formed by revolving the region um, bounded by the graphs 
y equals x cubed plus x plus 1, y equals 1, and x equals 1. And we're going to take this region and we're going to rotate it or revolve it around the line x equals 2. And if you look at your diagram here, you'll see that we have kind of a almost like a triangular shape region. We're going to be revolving it around the axis um, or the line x equals 2. And at first, you can look at this and you can say, okay, I could do either a vertical or a horizontal rectangle, and that's fine. But the thing that kind of sticks out in my mind is, is if I do a horizontal rectangle, so a horizontal rectangle means that I am going perpendicular to my axis of revolution, which would tell me that I'd be doing a washer. And if I do a washer, then I'm going to have to change my equation and put it in terms of an x equals. Okay, when I look at y equals x cubed plus x plus 1, I see that that's going to be kind of difficult to do. So I'm probably not going to want to go that route. I'm probably going to want to leave this equation just as it is, which means then I'm going to have to do the vertical representative rectangle. That's what I'm going to be revolving, and because that is parallel to my axis of revolution, which was x equals 2, that means I'm going to have to use the shell method. So the shell method tells me that my volume is equal to 2 pi, times the integral, and because I'm doing this um, in terms of x's, I'm going to be looking from 0 to 1 for my limits. My p of x, in this case, is going to equal this distance here, which is going to be 2 minus x. So 2 minus x is really my p of x. My h of x is going to be my height, which is going to be my function. So x cubed plus x plus 1. However, I also had the boundary that said um, that y was also equal to 1. So I'm going to have to subtract 1 out from that. So this is really my h of x equation. And then I have my dx. So when I go through and I simplify everything, I end up with a volume that's equal to 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 minus x times x cubed plus x dx. And if I FOIL everything out, 2 minus x times x cubed plus x is going to give me x, oops, I'm sorry, a negative x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2x dx. So if I integrate this, oops, let me get that out of there. I'm going to be looking at a negative x to the fifth divided by 5 plus I have x to the fourth. I'm going to be dividing that by 4. So 2 divided by 4 is really over 2 minus x cubed over 3 plus x squared. And again, I'm are evaluating that from 0 to 1. And when I do go in and I evaluate this, you'll see that you get a volume that is equal to 29 pi divided by 15. And that concludes section 7.3.